I mean, I'm always telling people, if you want to be the most productive version of yourself, whether it's real estate or speaking or coaching or fly fishing, whatever it is, you got to really love what you do where you love to do it. Are you a real estate investor looking to sharpen your skills or a newbie looking to become one? You're in the right place. Welcome to Where Should I Invest? Real Estate Investing in Canada with your host, Sarah Larvey. Hey guys, it's Sarah Larby and welcome back to another episode of Where Should I Invest? Today we are switching things up a little bit and we are talking about not so much real estate, we are talking about productivity, which is actually probably just as important because at some point you're gonna be managing your family, your job, your properties, being a landlord, flipping, etc., etc., and productivity and being as productive as possible is going to help you become as successful as you can be. So today's guest is Mark Struteski, who actually lives in the U.S., and Mark is also known as Mr. Productivity, and he's a productivity and time management specialist, accountability partner, speaker, author, trainer, workshop facilitator, and he helps entrepreneurs, real estate investors, corporations, small businesses, and so many other individuals take their productivity to the next level. And Mark actually also hosts his own podcast called the Mark Struchesky Podcast, and it's all about productivity. And actually, I was a guest on his show about a month ago, and I uh, had a great time talking about how to be as productive as possible while you're on the road traveling with a job and managing everything else on the side. So if, uh, if ever you guys want to hear that episode, um, search his podcast and my name and you will be able to listen to it. And uh, Mark is also an author of two books. One is How to Overcome Roadblocks on the Path to Your Success that he wrote in 2014. And the other book is A Succès Fou Life, what it is and how you can live it in 2011. He is passionate. He teaches people how to become productive, achieve their goals and dreams. And no matter who you are or what you do or where you are, whether it's Canada, the US, Europe, Africa, etc., anyone can improve their productivity. And Mark is obsessed with productivity, which is awesome. And he is obsessed with helping the world become a more productive place one person at a time. So if you guys wanted to speak and reach out to Mark, search him and reach out to him at mrproductivity.com. You could also search his podcast, which is on iTunes um, and a few others as well, the Mark Struchesky's podcast. And his last name is S-T-R-U-C-Z-E-W-S-K-I. And he's also done a lot of different speaking gigs and coaching and all that good stuff. So I've gotten some tips and tricks and some insights from this interview with Mark. And I'm just hoping that you guys enjoy it. And just let me know, like, is this something that you like more of, right? Not so much necessarily um, real estate specific, but are you guys interested in other parts to everything, whether it's productivity or how to negotiate or different topics. So if you are interested, reach out to me on a variety of different topics that you like to hear about. So uh, just a couple other things that I wanted to give you guys an update on. I went skydiving for the first time ever a couple weekends ago. That was awesome. So definitely it was always on my bucket list and I could never get my boyfriend to go. So there's a few investors from So Right and uh, we planned it. 12 people signed up, but only six showed up. Anyways, <laughs> thank you to the six of you that went skydiving and it was so much fun. We ended up going to the Niagara skydiving place and had a nice little plane ride over the Niagara Falls and jumped out and it was a good like 10 seconds of free fall jumping from about 12,000 feet and like the best experience ever so anyways let me know if you guys are skydivers or if that is on your bucket list but it is uh, definitely worth doing once in a lifetime maybe twice but it uh, was super super fun so you know you got to work hard but you got to get some stuff on your bucket list out of the way and whatever that is you know if it's one thing every couple months two three months let's get it out and uh you know live a little right work hard play hard 
I also wanted to take a moment and give a shout out to Keith and Donna. Keith and Donna are my students and they are doing an awesome job learning about real estate investing and made their first offer. Didn't get the house, but uh, getting used to making offers and I'm super excited to uh, to be able to help them out and uh, find them something soon. So they are doing awesome. And uh, you know, if you guys have any questions about investing in real estate or if you need any advice or help, please reach out to me. I am available at sarahlarby.com and you can go to the contacts me page, ask me any questions. Or if you guys have like a specific topic or question that you would like to know more about for the podcast, let me know. This is your guys' podcast, right? So I host it and I deliver it, but you guys are the ones that are listening. So I want to make sure that you guys are getting value each time and that you are getting your questions answered. So anything that you guys need, email me as well, sarah at sarahlarby.com. And I also have an Instagram account at sarahlarby84 and you guys can reach out to me there as well. So why don't we get on with our interview with Mark Strucheski and talk a little bit about productivity. And if you guys can take a moment, rate the show, give it a five stars and a review, that would be awesome. And I am just going through my reviews right now. Kellen P wrote a nice review as well. Thank you very much, Kellen. Really appreciates you taking the time to do that. And that's just how it works, right, with podcasts. In order to get your podcast up there for more people to see, that is basically based on reviews and ratings. So if you guys could just take a moment and do that, that'd be awesome. And without further ado, let's get on with our interview. Hi, Mark. How are you? I'm outstanding. How are you, Sarah? Very good. I'm really excited to have you on the show today. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for inviting me. I feel honored that I'm on your podcast. So Mark, today we actually are talking something different. So the show usually is about real estate and investing and different strategies. But I think part of being an overall successful real estate investor is tied into being productive and not wasting time and doing the right things. And so you are the master of productivity. And I really wanted to take the opportunity to have you on the show so that you can share some great tips and tricks today. You know, I went out and got the domain, mrproductivity.com, but maybe I should have gotten masterproductivity.com. You got me thinking here, Sarah. (laughs) Perfect. So you know what? Let's get right into it. And I want to know first and foremost, a little bit about you. What are some details that we wouldn't necessarily know just going on the website and reading? Well, it all started when I was fired from my job back in 2005. A lot of people don't like to talk about their They're unexpected terminations, also known as firings. But had I not gotten fired back in 2005 from a local company here in Houston, I may not be having this conversation on your podcast, Sarah. Okay, very interesting. So you took the most of it and created something awesome from a situation that a lot of people might have, you know, been really over and given up on. So good for you. Well, it wasn't awesome. What happened was, is when I lost my job, well, I didn't lose it. They took it from me. I decided to become an entrepreneur and I went into professional photography. Now I didn't care about photography and I really just wanted the gear and to be able to call myself a photographer. But one thing that came out of that was speaking. I started speaking at local groups on how to take better pictures, which launched my speaking career. So had I not gotten fired, I would not have probably be a speaker right now. So even though the photography career was a bust, the speaking really made me shine. And that's where I am a speaker now. Amazing. So how did productivity all come into play? How did you become so interested in it? Well, it's actually by accident. When I stopped speaking about photography, I came up with some other topics. To this day, I don't know where I came up with the topic of from hopeless to hopeful. I have no clue. Don't ask me to explain it. I don't know to this day. And then I said, hmm, I'm going to talk about how to overcome roadblocks on the path to success. Note to self, if you're not successful, don't tell people how to become successful. So I was on the phone with my coach one day and I was kind of bummed because I really fell in love with speaking. And I'm like, I don't know what to talk about. And he said, well, why don't you talk about productivity? I'm like, productivity? Why would I want to talk about productivity? He said, well, because you're so good at it. You're like one of the most productive people I know. And I asked him, I said, well, isn't everybody productive? He goes, no, most people are not productive. And so the more I got into it, I'm like, hey, I I really like this. So it combines what I'm passionate about, speaking, helping people, and productivity. It it was a perfect good storm. That's awesome. So why 
where you productive and others are not. So, you know, looking at somebody that is productive versus somebody that's not productive, what are some things that you can point out? I think the way I was raised, I was an only child and my parents ran a very structured household. So, you know, you ate at a certain time, you had to do your chores, you had to do homework. And I think I was just raised that way. And and, and as I got into my life, it's like, okay, I wanted to have a structured life. And I was very sheltered because I thought everyone had a structured life. Everyone was productive. And as I got in the world, you know, I moved out of my parents. I moved on on my own or whatever. It's like, man, most people are chaos. They're just, you know, bills don't get paid on time. They wait till the gas tanks on E or whatever. And I'm like, why are people operating that way? And, I, and so I take that and I tell people, look at, you really got to be more proactive with your life instead of just waiting until you run out of gas on the side of the highway. I mean, you got to say, okay, it's getting toward yes, you go get gas, simple things like that. But I was raised to always be forward thinking. And so I thought the rest of the world was that, but it turns out it wasn't. So why do you think that is? Why do you think a lot of people out there are not as productive as they should be? One of the answers is they don't know. I mean, in all fairness, you may not know how to be productive. You may have come from you know a bad household or maybe you had 35 siblings. So maybe you weren't taught to be productive. The other thing is laziness. People say, you know, I, I'm happy the way I am. I'm happy always being late. I, I just want to do just barely enough to get the paycheck, just barely enough to avoid getting fired. So, you know, I don't care. So laziness, I don't care. You don't know how. And the other thing is people, they, they live in a way that they're not worried about, you know, how do I do the job right now? They're like, okay, the weekend's coming, you know, so they're not really intentional. You've looked at the high performers in our world. They're very intentional about how they get things done. They don't just sit there and say, whatever happens, happens. They have a plan. So I think a lot of people who aren't productive don't have a plan. They just, whatever happens, happens. And I think that's a bad a recipe for anybody for in terms of productivity. Yeah, absolutely. Do you think that there is a piece that is connected with motivation? Yeah, I mean, I think it's very difficult to be productive if you don't like your job. I mean, I'm always telling people, if you want to be the most productive version of yourself, whether it's real estate or speaking or coaching or fly fishing, whatever it is, you got to really love what you do where you love to do it. And that may include going out on your own. So if you are doing something you're really good at, but you hate it, maybe you're an accountant and everyone's in your family has always been an accountant, but you hate accounting. You're good at it, but you hate it. Well, you're never going to be the ultimate productive version of yourself until you go do something that you truly love. And I think more people need to step back and go, am I doing what I really truly love to do? If the answer is no, then go find what that thing is and go do that. Yeah. I mean, even just finishing school, I do a lot of work with younger folks, millennials and whatnot. And a lot of the time they don't even know what they like. So are there any specific tips that you can say, here are some questions to ask yourself, or here are some things that you can do to see what field you're even going into in the first place? Because a lot of them that I talk to, they don't really love their job. So is there something that you would recommend ahead of time that they can do? Yes. It's going to call, it's going to result old school technology. Okay. So what I encourage people to do, get a notebook and get a couple pens, go someplace quiet and just write down everything you love to do. Don't edit it. Don't say, oh, that's not practical. You know, you ladies, if you want to be a mermaid, write down mermaid. I mean, you may cross <laughs> stuff later, but don't censor yourself. Just write and write and write. And what's going to happen is as you start writing, you're going to come up with a whole bunch of ideas. And then you're going to think the tap is turned off. This is the danger your point. This is where the people go, okay, I'm done. And they walk away. Don't stop here. You wait. It may take five, 10, 15 minutes. All of a sudden, all, all those ideas that are buried in your subconscious mind are going to start dripping forward. You're like, oh my gosh, I haven't thought about that in years. Now you're going to start writing again. What happens is people stop at that first pause and they think that's all they have. The first stuff you write is the stuff at the top of your mind. But now you got to wait for that subconscious mind to start putting the stuff to the forefront of your mind so you can write it down. So doing this exercise, really important. The other thing is, Talk to your friends and colleagues and family and say, you know what? What do you think I'm good at? Don't say, look, I know you know me for years. I don't want to preface anything. You know, what would you call me on that you think I'm an expert on? And just get their opinion. You may be surprised that you're trying to do lane A and they're like, oh no, you need to be line C, lane C over here. So ask people who know you really well, what do you think I'm really good at? Because the answers between that and the notebook exercise could really get you excited about something that you haven't thought about in a while, but you're really passionate about. 
Yeah, some great advice. You know, I actually went to school for nursing originally. And though I admire that profession and some people are great at it, it just wasn't for me. And unfortunately, I had already done four years of school when I decided I wanted to go into sales. And I mean, regardless, it's still a four year, you know, Bachelor of Science, but I just wasn't passionate about it. And then even though I was good, it was really hard. And then I found sales and then I became excited. I became motivated. And then I think that because of that, it helped me become more productive. And then I found real estate, which, you know, the best thing I've ever actually covered. So, you know, (laughs) but it is great advice, Mark, because if I would have done maybe a little bit more of digging and talking to people that I know, I would have been led down this path and I could have taken something else in school instead of, you know, the four years of nursing school, which unfortunately I'm not doing anything with it now. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's interesting because you were on my podcast a while back and I did not know you went to nursing school. So I learned something new about Sarah today. That's right. Okay. So I wanted to definitely talk about you've got tons of experience. So you see a lot of things that people do wrong in terms of productivity or people that were trying to be productive, but there's like lots of common problems. I want to talk a little bit about that and then just some tips on how we can help people solve that. The number one tip I tell everybody is stop trusting your brain. Okay. It's not a question of if, but when your brain will fail you. When an idea pops in your head, immediately write it down either on a notebook or put it in an app. Do not put it on the back of an old envelope or back of a post-it. And for goodness sake, don't tear off a little corner of a piece of paper and jot it down in some hieroglyphics because you're not going to know what it is. You got to record it because what's going to happen is you're going to say, oh, I won't forget when I get to the office or I won't forget when I get home. Yeah, you will forget. So get that stuff recorded so you won't forget. And what happens is people say, well, what happens when I'm driving? Far as I know, every country in the world allows you to actually pull over to the side of the road and then you can be on your cell phone or write a note. So don't use that excuse because you're driving. If someone else is in the car, say, hey, listen, I got a great idea. Would you mind writing this down or put it in your phone? You got to capture the idea immediately because so many great ideas come to our heads and then we think we're going to remember later, but later comes and the idea is long gone. And you're like, oh man, what was the idea? It was a great idea. It could have been a million dollar idea, but you didn't record it. Now you don't remember what it is. So then I think, and I don't know if you're going that way, it's what you also do with that idea and taking action on it that probably gets you to point, you know, B and moving forward because ideas are great. And it's a great tip because I think of lots of things and, you know, where there's lots of things that I don't have a very good memory. So I forget a lot of, you know, the things that I'm like, oh, this is an awesome idea. But then how do you go ahead and say, okay, this is a cool idea and go to that next step? Well, I like what Tony Robbins says. He says, when you come up with an idea, okay, record the idea, but then immediately do something that is going to get you closer to that goal. So for example, let's say, you know, Sarah, I want to summit Mount Everest. Okay, great. What's the first thing you have to do? I have no idea how to summit Mount Everest. So I would go Google how to summit Mount Everest. I may read one article. But you know what? I took one baby step toward my goal because you came up with the idea. Now you did something with it. Instead of saying, that's a great idea. I'll work on it next month. Well, then you lose the excitement. So go do something. You may have to go download a book to your iPad or something like that, or maybe make a phone call or maybe stop by a store. Do something immediately because that's going to cement the idea and get you inspired for action. Absolutely. So let's just take real estate as an example. Now, I know you're not necessarily specific on real estate, but you might be able to help us out. So let's just say I have a lot of listeners on the show that haven't bought their first investment property yet. So their idea is, okay, I want to be an investor. I want to at some point buy a property. Do you have some specific steps that maybe they can do that will get them closer to that goal? Yes. Depending on where you are in the process, maybe you just decided today you want to invest in real estate. Well, then first thing I would do is, well, you're already doing one thing, right? You're listening to Sarah's podcast. Second of all, are you following Sarah on social media? Have you connected with her? So reach out to Sarah, ask her, hey, what are the pitfalls I should look at? What do you recommend? Start educating yourself immediately. Now, if you're further down the line and you've been looking at properties for four or five months, like, "Ah, I don't know about this one, what about this one? Just pull the trigger. I mean, if you've been, you know, because you can be a paralysis by over analysis, just you're analyzing things over and over again. There comes a point where you just got to, like I said, if you want to learn how to swim, just jump in the pool. If you keep analyzing, Number one, you could lose a lot of these properties that are for sale. Someone else could swoop in and buy it because you're procrastinating. You're, you're trying to make sure it's the perfect property. And correct me if I'm wrong, Sarah, I don't think there's any such thing as a perfect property at a perfect price, right? No, not, not going to happen, especially not in 2018. Right. So if you see a really good deal, listen to your gut. 
maybe go to your accountability partner like uh my wife michelle one of the things i do if i want to buy something i will come up to her i won't ask you to read a sales page i'll just say hey i want to give you an idea give me your initial gut reaction because you want people's gut reaction you don't want people to go do the research and do all this you know reading you just want to what do you think about this idea they may say that's crazy or go ahead and do it and then take some action everybody listening to this conversation can take some action today on something they've been putting off for way too long it's just that take that first goal maybe you don't buy the property maybe you go do something else but take that first step absolutely that's really well said and you know i think that you hit it on the head that there's so many people that just analyze and analyze and analyze and they never pull the trigger and it's not about buying that perfect property but it's how much time you're invested in real estate so in 10 years from now if you buy something today and it's a decent deal you're going to be so much further ahead in 10 years from now that it won't even matter if you bought it for ten thousand dollars above what you you know probably could have gotten it for so yeah i, I just say you know take action now and you'll definitely definitely greatly benefit in time. Now there's two companies, Google and Facebook. How many people wish today they bought stock in that company when they first came out? You know, right. Google, what's a Google? What's a Facebook? But if you would have bought stock when they first came out, you wouldn't have to work anymore. So it's just like, well, I'll wait till they get to be bigger. See, it's the same thing as real estate. You know, you keep putting it off. Well, there's a lot of variables that can go wrong. I'm by no means a real estate expert, but what if you wait six months and all of a sudden that neighborhood declines in terms of value? Mm -hmm. You know, you waited, you could have bought it at premium now, you know, so sometimes waiting is not the best option. Absolutely. So oh, there's a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of investors. There's a lot of people here that are listening that also have a full-time job. How should someone juggle all the different parts of their lives? Maybe they have families as well. They've got potentially a little bit of travel to do. How are you productive with all the other stuff going on at the same time? It's a big word, Sarah. It's called compartmentalization. When you're working at job A, your full-time job, you're working at that job. When you're home with the family, you're home with the family. If you're doing your side hustle, you're doing your side hustle. Social media, one of the biggest distractions we have in this day and age. You need to schedule that stuff, not fit it in because social media, as you know, could be a huge time suck. Right. And you need to say, okay, I'm going to spend 30 minutes or I'm going to spend an hour on Instagram or all social media platforms uh, tonight from five to six. And then that's it. What happens is it's a blurry line between your full-time job and our side hustle and social media and our family. It's just kind of like these blurred lines. You need to be compartmentalization. You need to say, okay, when I'm doing this, A, I'm doing A. I'm not doing B, C, D, or E. But so many people think they can multitask, and science has proven that you cannot multitask. The brain's just rapidly switching between tasks. So multitasking is a myth, and people got to understand that. So just do one thing, do it really well, and then move on to the next thing. Absolutely. So I was actually watching a few of your videos and a few comments from your social media that you're not going to be on as much. So is that one of the reasons? Yes. What I did is the book that really changed my life is Deep Work by Cal Newport. I was going to write a book, but after I listened to this book twice on Audible, I said, no, there's no need. Just go buy Deep Work. The reason why is he talks about deep work. And when deep work means you just go really deep, like for 45 minutes, 60 minutes, 90 minutes, however long you need to work. It's all you do. So if you're going to write a book, all you do is you write for that period of time. You don't check social media. You don't do anything else. And as I start, he's got a chapter in there about social media. And I looked at all my social media platforms, you know, Facebook and Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube. And I'm like, first of all, which ones am I getting engagement on? I mean, if I could have a million followers, but I'm not getting engagement, what's the point? I narrowed it down to Instagram and LinkedIn, the two platforms I get the most engagement on. I actually deleted, I know this is heresy, Sarah, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, and YouTube are off my iPhone and iPad. Now I still have accounts there and I will still check in one or two times a day via my Mac. Or if I really am desperate, which has not been the case yet, I am going Safari on my iPhone. But not having the apps on the phone, I'm not missing out on anything. Mark Zuckerberg hasn't come to my home and yelled at me while I'm not, I don't have the app anymore. And that's given me more freedom to get stuff done that really needs to get done. Right. That was my next question. So how has that changed your life so far? It's been incredible because what I do is I record a 60 second video every day and I upload to Instagram and LinkedIn. And literally from the time I press record, to the time I uploaded both the videos on both platforms, it's less than five minutes. I just move on with my day. I just offer value. I share some stuff and get on with my day. I think people are using social media as an escape. They're not realizing that, you know, that's taking time. That's time, an hour on Facebook. That's an hour you're never going to get back ever again. 
if you look at the high performers, most of them have teams that are posting. So while you're reading all this stuff, they're not on social media. They're actually making money. Does that make sense? <laughs> so what, I'm not saying anything wrong with social media. And on my email today, I actually told people how you can mute things on Twitter. If you want to stay connected with someone on Twitter, you can actually mute them, not see the things in the timeline. Same with Instagram. So if you are friends with people, but they keep posting stuff that you're not interested, you can actually mute their posts and then just keep the timeline what you want to see. So you can take control of your social media timelines, and I encourage you to do that. So if you see the same person's posts all the time, you don't have to unfriend them because they'll know. But if you unfollow them or you mute them, they have no idea you're not seeing their stuff. Where should I invest with your host, Sarah Larvey? We'll be right back. Hey guys, I just wanted to take a quick moment and pause the podcast interview here because I wanted to introduce you to Dahlia Barsoom of Streetwise Mortgages. I am a big believer, as you guys probably have heard, work with a mortgage broker. They are going to help you scale. And when I was first growing in real estate investing and looking to buy my second property and my third property, I was going directly to the bank then. I hadn't met Dahlia yet. And I actually was hitting a roadblock when it came to financing because the bank started asking me for 25% as the down payment. And then for my third property, they wanted 35%. And it was really, really hard for me to A, understand why it was creeping up like that. And B, I didn't have 35% to put down. I had 20%. And luckily, I actually met Dahlia at that point in time. And Dahlia is actually an investor herself, and she's works with many, many investors. And she knows all the pitfalls and the barriers that normally come up with dealing directly with a bank and all the different lenders. And Dahlia was actually able to not just find me proper alternatives, but I've got nine properties now, and I'm still able to get financing with A lenders, and it allows me to be able to scale up without hitting the financing wall. And so she's been a tremendous help. So the other thing I really, really enjoy is Dahlia also does a free goals analysis. So if you go to either my website or her website, streetwisemortgages.com, mention the podcast and ask for the free goals analysis, it was a game changer for me. And it allowed me to actually understand what I needed to do, how many properties I was going to get because of the cash flow that I was looking for. If you guys wanted to reach out to Dahlia, you can reach out to her by email, which is info at streetwisemortgages.com. Or you can actually reach out to her on the website at streetwisemortgages.com. And then just go to the contact section. And you can also call her at 1-800-208-6255. Thanks for listening and back to the show. Back to the show. Where should I invest? Real estate investing in Canada with your host, Sarah Larvey. Yeah, some great tips. I mean, for me personally, I just got into social media and probably about three, four months ago got Instagram. So I have LinkedIn for my Mars stuff. And then for my real estate stuff, I have Instagram. But it is really tough. I can see how people can get lost and spend hours in that stuff and lose yep. a lot of productivity. What other time wasters do you think there are out there that people spend a lot of time on? Television. Now, I'm a productivity guy, and I will tell you it's okay to watch TV, play video games, watch movies. I don't have any problem with that at all. The thing is, you got to earn it. So when I sit down at night and watch TV with my wife, because she works during the day, I know I've worked hard all day long. And so I watch television guilt free. But I'll also tell you a couple of things about that. Number one, I know, except for sporting events, I never watch anything live, period. It's all recorded. And a one hour show only takes like 40 minutes to watch. Second of all is I don't follow the plot lines. So like my wife and I like Chicago Fire, Chicago PD, Chicago Med. But you know, in the beginning of the show, they say previously on Chicago Fire. I need that because I don't remember what happened last week because it's not important stuff for me to remember. I just watch it because I like the shows, but I can't tell you this character's doing this. I, the dinner plot line. I don't follow that closely. I just follow it because I enjoy the shows. And I think people get really involved. Like I'm a big walking dead fan. They get involved in all the symbolism. Like I just watch the show. Cause I like the show. Okay. I'm not a writer. Now, if I was a writer, 
if I aspired to be a big time writer, I would not want to know all that stuff, but that's not what I do for a living. I do productivity. So it's okay to watch television and play video games. Just make sure number one, you're going to limit yourself say, okay, I'm going to watch TV for two hours tonight and that's it. Don't sit there and turn it on at five o'clock and, and fall asleep from the TV at 11 o'clock. Not that any of your listeners have ever done that. Make sure you have a plan. If you want to watch football, like Sundays in my house are football days. I may watch three, six, nine hours of football all day. Okay. But you know what? I worked hard all week long. I watch it guilt free. But to be honest with you, Sarah, I've never watched nine hours of football. I watch my Houston Texans, but then the next thing comes on like, ah, you know, I, I watch my game for the day. So I never watched nine hours of TV, but I, I'm not saying it's, you shouldn't watch TV as long as you're earning the right to watch that television program. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I do this with the radio. So I will listen to maybe half an hour of the radio after I've listened to about four hours of podcast. So I kind of do the the ratio thing. And once I have enough information, and I love podcasts on self development, but even more so in real estate and real estate investing. And so the, the reason that I know what I know today is because I decided that instead of just driving and listening to the radio, constantly and oh my god those commercials yep. drive me crazy i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna fill yep. my brain with information and i think it was malcolm gladwell that wrote that book on if you got to do ten thousand hours to be an expert and i'm like how am i going to get ten thousand hours if i'm working you know 50 hours at my job and then i look i'm like oh you know i'm driving quite a bit i might as well listen to podcasts yep. and get that time in that way and it completely changed my life and also, you really see what else is out there. It expands your circle of people that you know and say, oh, wow, this person has like 100 properties, 200 properties. It's, and then, and then the, the possibilities just become so much bigger because you have access to a much bigger circle. Yeah, Zig Ziglar used to call it Automobile University. Yeah. Absolutely. Love it. So, I mean, those that's like, for example, for me, I actually don't watch TV. I probably haven't really watched TV in years um other than the you know odd show that i'll i'll watch with my boyfriend just because i know he does like it and i think the last movie i saw i saw one this year with my uh, little sister was um but the one before that was like in 2010 it was avatar so you know it was one of those things for me i'm like okay well i don't you know i don't really have a whole lot of time how can i tweak some things and be more productive and one of the things was you know let's cut out the tv let's cut out the radio and i really don't miss it and it actually makes you there's so much negativity out there right there's the new it's yeah. always negative. This is per shooting, this, that, or whatever it is. It, it actually becomes depressing. So I would rather fill my brain with positive stuff and things that I can learn and apply and move myself forward with. And when I looked at the TV and the radio, I didn't really think it was doing much for me. 100% agree. I love listening to audiobooks when I'm out running because I run every day. And one of my podcast guests says he listens on 2X. And at the time, I was listening to 1X. Mm -hmm. And I went to 2X. Like a man, I decided I'd go from 1X to 2X. My brain's going, what are you doing? So I went from 1, 2, 5 to 1 and a half to 2. I can listen to audiobooks now in 2X speed, which means an hour book only takes you four hours. But I love, if I'm not going to the out there huffing and puffing once in a while i do listen to music but i love listening to audiobooks or podcasts i want to learn as i'm exercising my body i think far few people do that they're always listening to their songs i can work and listen to music but i can't work and listen to people talk to me and so when i'm out i don't like listening to music i rather listen to something that can help me improve my life absolutely and speaking of fitness and improving your life i see a lot of your videos on running so you've been running for quite some time Yes. Uh, last year in October, August, 2017, Houston got hit with hurricane Harvey and we had a lot of flooding during the storm. There was an article on runnersworld.com. It was titled what I learned from running every day for 250 days. I'm like, huh, that's interesting. So I read the article and this girl up in New York city, she started running at least one mile a day every day. And I'm like, you know, I could do that. Cause I run a nine minute mile. I said, I could do that nine minutes. No big deal. So on August 27th, of last year, 2017, I started running every day. And today we're recording this at the end of July. It's 330 days. I cannot believe I'm up to 330 days, almost to a full year. Wow. And I've run in a cold rain. I've run, of course, in the summer, it gets a bit hot here in Houston, but I've run every single day. If I had my knees giving problems, back pain, every day and i really enjoy it i'm not trying to train for a marathon or a tough mutter or anything like that i'm just doing it because i enjoy being outside i enjoy running and people will follow me like you like wow for over 300 days and like i can't believe i've done over 300 days it's crazy but there's a guy that started running on may 26 1969 he's not in this today so wow. when you compare me to him it's like oh you know i love running though i love being outdoors very cool so has that improved your life when it comes to productivity 
Oh, yeah, because you'll be amazed at how many great ideas you get when you're out running. My problem is I try to dictate the Siri when I'm running and I get home like, what did I say? Because, you know, you're huffing and puffing and you're like, so sometimes I can decipher. Sometimes I have no clue what I said. It's like some gibberish. But for some reason, the shower and cardio exercise gets my brain, give me all these ideas. It's almost like, okay, it's inconvenient for an idea. Let's give Mark an idea right now. And I'm like, okay, I'm in the shower. What am I going to do? And one of my guests said they have something called uh, shower crayons, uh, which are made for kids, but they use it for themselves. So when an idea pops up in the shower, they just write in the shower walls. And I'm like, that's a pretty good idea. I, I get me one of those because your ideas come when it's, mo when it's least convenient for you to write them down. That is really cool. This is the first one, <laughs> the first time I've ever heard of shower crayons. Very cool. Yeah, I think they're called aqua notes, if I'm not mistaken. Very cool. So you have a podcast yourself. Yes. And uh, you have a lot of different guests from lots of different backgrounds that talk about productivity. Yes. And so I want to know some of the best tips and strategies that you've received from that podcast. Well, I've gotten great guests who have told me, you know, this is stuff is going to be way out there for your audience, but it's common sense. And I know common sense isn't so common anymore. The <laughs> first thing is what gets repeated over and over and over again is some form of gratitude. Whether you do a journal, whether you meditate on gratitude, whatever, we don't stop and think about the small successes we have. We tend to only celebrate the big successes, the big clients, the big real estate deal, you know, the big stuff. Well, you're going to have more little wins than big wins. And we need to recognize that. So I encourage people to whether you write them down or you say them out loud, or you just spend a couple minutes in quiet solitude thinking about it, make sure you're counting your blessings. Make sure you're really understanding how grateful you have it because you woke up today, you're alive. Mm -hmm. And there are people who got it much worse than you do. And it's really important you understand that when you stop being grateful, I think you kind of stunt your growth. So that's one of the big things is being grateful. Another thing is make sure you have a morning routine. Morning routines don't have to be two, three hours. It doesn't mean you have to get at 3.30 or 4 o'clock in the morning. It just means you need to have a routine that you do every single morning. And I propose that the morning routine must be done anywhere in the world. In other words, not your specific Starbucks, not your specific McDonald's, but something you can do anywhere in the world. Like I get up in the morning, I read the Bible, I write my goals in my notebook by hand, and then they go out and run. That's stuff I can do anywhere in the world. Are your goals daily goals or are they your annual goals or your, your life goals? Or what goals are you writing down? What I'm doing now is kind of a hybrid. I have goals I want to accomplish this year and then into the future. So I don't do my daily goals because that changes day by day. And the tip I got from Grant Cardone is you write your goals over and over again. First thing you wake up, last thing before to go to bed, because it becomes cemented in your head that you can be able to recite these goals at a moment's notice. I am shocked, Sarah, a number of people I say, what are your goals like? I don't know. Like, you don't have any goals. I mean, how do you get up in the morning? I mean, your goals are never going to be perfect. My goals change all the time. Like I was writing my goals the other night and my brain says, you know, we need to change this goal. And I just wrote a new goal, but it's changing. But the thing is I write it every day, twice a day. And you got to do this. You can't do it just on January 1st and then not think about it again. You got to be in your goals all the time. Be thinking about it all the time. Cause if you're not, how do you know if you're ever going to accomplish anything? For sure. So are your goals smart goals? Are they 10x goals like Grand Cardone would say or somewhere in the middle? Uh, yes, I try to do 10x goals for myself, um, which is kind of hard because, you know, 10x is a big number. You multiply it by 10. It's a pretty big number. But some of my goals, they're all very uncomfortable. Like right now, there's not a goal on my list that I could accomplish today. That's the thing. Your goals should stretch you. Too many people say, well, I'm 190 pounds right now in July. I want to weigh 190 by the end of the year. Well, that's a weak goal. That's five pounds in what, five, six months? That's crazy. So do something really a 10X goal. So in other words, let's say your goal was $100,000 this year. Well, make it a million because Grant Cardone says it's better to fall short on a million dollar goal than a hundred thousand dollar goal. No one's saying you're going to make a million dollars. I'm just saying you got to dream big and people are not dreaming big enough. So I try to make my goals right now in the foreseeable future. There's no way in the world I would accomplish a single one of my goals. But the reason I write them down in that way is like, man, if I'm going to make these goals, I'm going to have to hustle to make these goals a reality. Yeah, absolutely. Now, do you do anything daily to get you towards those goals? Like do you have processes that you also write down or how does that work? 
what I do is during the week is I actually schedule my days. Now, when I schedule my days, I go back to what I told you about the deep work from Cal Newport. If I schedule, okay, I'm going to look for speaking gigs from 10 to 11. I don't do anything else except for look for speaking gigs. I do schedule time in my day to read. I'm an avid reader and I've always wanted to read the latest book to find out how I could get that next hack to make me more productive or more successful. So I do put these things in place, but a lot of people don't put things on their schedule. And what happens is they get to a point where, well, there's nothing in my schedule, so I'm going to take day off. I mean, it's just one day. Well, there's nothing on your schedule tomorrow. So they're like, well, you know, I've been working really hard. So I'll take two days off and that becomes three days and four days and five days. And all of a sudden you're like, man, I haven't done anything in five days. And now you've lost all momentum. So you need to put some process into place, whether that's scheduling time for you to do X, Y, or Z, or have someone hold you accountable. You got to do that because otherwise we can lie to ourselves. One of the things I offer my clients is an accountability partner because you put something in your calendar. Well, you cannot do it or delete it. Who's going to know? You can put something on your to-do list and you can delete it or not do it. Who's going to know or mark it complete. But if you tell somebody, Hey, Sarah, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z by Friday. Well, now you've got someone outside your body that's going to check on you and say, Hey, did you do this, Mark? Uh, no. And then the good accountability partner would say, what did you do? Well, I spent too much time on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram. And then that's how I work with them to get them off those platforms. But you really got to, you know, we are more likely to be lazy than hustling. And even the hustlers in the world, they have got it so ingrained that they hustle. It wasn't a habit. You're not born hustling. You're born lazy. You're born a liar. Okay. You don't have to be taught how to be lazy. It comes natural. So you got to work real hard to be a hustler. Yeah. And you know what, even just to tie it into real estate, I mean, if your goal is to buy your first investment property within 12 months, having an accountability partner saying this month, I'm going to offer on five properties and I'm going to analyze 20 properties. And then just even just having those small baby steps and having somebody hold you accountable. Cause at the end of the day, you're probably going to offer on a lot of properties before you actually get the one that you want at a reasonable price. So there's, you know, a lot of little steps to get there. So having that accountability partner, I know for me, for example, I bought a cottage in April. I'm like, I'm going to buy a cottage this year. And I told as many people as I can <laughs> to hold me accountable. And I think it just pushed you so much further. Yeah. Sort of like when I uh, started my podcast, I came up with the idea last June of 2017. And within a month, I started my podcast. You got to get moving on the goal. You just can't say, well, it'd be nice if someday I start a podcast or someday I buy a property or someday I go to school. No, do something today to get going in that direction. Because, you know, like Tony Robbins says all the time, I love this. He says, the problem is we're shooting all over ourselves. I should go to school. I should invest. I should start a podcast. Well, should isn't going to pay the bills. Actually doing something is going to pay the bills, is going to get that property bought. Absolutely. So some great, great tips. And any other last, like what's the one big tip that you received from Grant Cardone, like when you were talking to him? Well, I never talked to him personally, although I hope to have my podcast eventually in the future. He says, if someone has already done it, you can do it. So if you want to make a million dollars a year, someone's already done it. You want to make a hundred million dollars a year, someone's already done it. You want to make a billion dollars a year, somebody's already done it. So as long as at least one person has done whatever you want to do, buy 20 properties a year, buy a hundred properties a year, it doesn't matter. If someone else has already done it, you can do it too. They've already proven it can be done. Great, great. So you do a lot of stuff as well. Like I mentioned, the podcast, you do the speaking, you do coaching, you do lots of different things. How do you manage all of that? <laughs> I pull my hair out. And if this is a video <laughs> podcast, people know I'm bald. I do it very intentionally. You can't hope. Hope is not a strategy. Hope is not a tactic. You got to get in the mud. You got to get in the dirt. You got to get dirty and get the stuff done. There is no easy you know, if I just do X, then all my problems are going to go away. It's going to take work. Nothing is easy in this life. Well, maybe laziness is easy, but if you really want to accomplish something, if you want to buy that property, if you want to have a huge portfolio of properties, it's going to take work. And so th that work has to be very, very, very intentional. You have to wake up with a day every day with a plan. When I wake up, I don't go, Oh my goodness, it's Monday. I wake up and say, it's Monday. Great. I love waking up every single morning. I embrace the day. And if any listeners are saying, I loathe when I wake up, well, you need to, as the kids used to say, I don't know what to say anymore. You need to check yourself before you wreck yourself. You need to say, okay, if I regret loathe waking up in the morning, I'm probably not doing what I love to do. How do I 
fix that. Now, don't quote quit your job, but do the exercise we talked about earlier with the notebook. And maybe you can start a side hustle on the weekend. Maybe you work on an hour, two hours, three hours a weekend until you build up enough so you can quit your job. But don't go through life being unhappy. You only get one life and you should enjoy the life you're living. Absolutely. I am a 100% believer in that. And I also am a 100% believer that you cannot or ideally don't quit your job tomorrow. But rather, if you're going and trying to buy real estate, invest in some cash flowing properties. And over time, you're going to replace your income and you'll be in a much better ability to move forward in life. And just keep in mind, you need your job to qualify for mortgages for the most part. So <laughs> it's kind of a catch 22. Or you know what, maybe you just get a different job and start a side hustle on the side. I love it. I agree with you 100%. Perfect. So uh, the next part of our podcast is called the lightning round. So there's a series of five questions. Essentially, they're the same questions for everyone. I'm going to tweak them a little bit for you and make them geared towards productivity a little bit more. But just give me like the first answer that comes to your mind. You ready? Yes, I am. So question number one, what is your favorite book ever? My favorite book, well, I'm going to give you a, a two-parter here. My favorite book ever is the Bible, but okay. the next favorite book that has affected my life more than anything else is Cal Newport's Deep Work. Okay, perfect. And number two, what is your favorite podcast? Now, people may say he's going to say the Mark Shuchesky podcast. No, my favorite podcast ever is by my podcast hoster called Lipson. They got a podcast called The Feed. And what they do on the podcast is they give you the latest news on happening in the podcasting world. Uh, Rob and Elsie do a great job there. So that's how I stay in the cutting edge of everything that's going on with the podcasting world. Okay, very cool. I have not heard that one. I'll have to start listening to it. Question number three. Aside from anything productivity related, coaching, podcasting, et cetera, what do you do for fun? I love running. I love hanging out with my wife. I love sports. I love football. We're getting close to football season. And so I can just watch football, college and pro all weekend long. I love it. Very cool. And number four, if you lost all your money and your assets tomorrow, how would you start again? Well, this is a very great question question because I know a lot more now than I did, you know, 53 years ago when I was born. If I lost all my money and assets tomorrow, um, I would not freak out because I know money is not everything. I would probably do the exercise that I talked about a couple of times in the podcast, find out, okay, where are my strengths? Okay. What's the first thing I need to do? Do I need to call somebody? Do I need to attend a networking event? Do I need to whatever? go to library and get on the internet. Cause I, you know, if I lost everything, I may have lost the computer. You know, I will take action doing something immediately. Okay. Great answer. So number five, I asked this to a lot of investors, but you can spin it whatever direction you want. So if somebody has $50,000 and they came to you and asked you, how should I spend this money? What would you recommend? Well, I'm going to pull out my studying from uh, taking Financial Peace University from Dave Ramsey three times with my wife and say, you need to pay off some debt first. You know, I'm not a big financial guy, but I see so many people who are investing in the stock market or in real estate and they got boatloads of debt that are have high interest. I'm like, why don't you pay off the debt, then invest the money? I just think it's crazy to owe hundred thousand dollars and then have a hundred thousand dollars in property, which means the net zero. So I would tell people to pay off debt. Now, if you pay off your debt, I would say if you're free and clear, first of all, invest part of that money. I was a stock market kind of guy. Now I'm more into real estate. I would say go go do something fun. Maybe take your husband or wife out to a nice steak dinner, but then don't waste the money. Don't go blow it on lottery tickets. Go spend it on purpose. Okay. Awesome. And great answers on that. So where can listeners find you, Mark, if they wanted to reach out and know more about you? The easiest thing to do, because my last name, you're not going to be able to spell it, is go to mrproductivity.com. Mr. spelled out M-I-S-T-E-R, mrproductivity.com. It'll redirect you to my website. There you can find out about my productivity coaching, my podcast, my social media, everything's on my website, but just go to mrproductivity.com. Okay, great. And any final words of advice or anything else that you'd like to let the listeners know about before we part ways? Yes. Stop your procrastinating. You know what you need to do. So go do it today. Awesome. So on that note, thank you so much, Mark, for sharing your great insights and knowledge on productivity. And I know that is very, very applicable to everyone and also very applicable to real estate investors. Thank you so much for your insights. Thank you for inviting me. This has been a lot of fun. Perfect. Bye. 
Thanks so much for listening to Where Should I Invest with your host, Sarah Larby. Make sure to listen in next time. We'll catch you on the next episode of Where Should I Invest.